Welcome to this week's episode of Coffee with a Journalist, brought to you by One Pitch. Are you curious how One Pitch can help you find relevant journalists to pitch, including some of the guests on this podcast? Head to our website at onepitch.co to learn more. Our guest today on Coffee with a Journalist is Emily Rella. Emily is a senior news writer at Entrepreneur, writing about feature stories, business, tech, and lifestyle. During the episode, Emily shares two examples of pitches that captured her attention, the most effective ways to build and foster a working relationship, how to position exclusives and embargoes, and more. Let's hear from Emily now. Welcome everyone. This is Coffee with a Journalist. I'm Beck Bamberger. We're here to talk about journalists and what they like about publicists, hopefully, what they also don't like sometimes. That happens too. All good. Today with us is Emily Rellis. She's the senior news writer at Entrepreneur. Very excited to chat with you today, Emily, live from Florida, apparently. I love it. How are you? <laughs> As of 12 hours ago. I am yes. great. I'm so excited to be here. So Yes. I When we were on video there for a minute, it looked like you were outside, enjoying life, having a great time. So Hiding in the palm trees. I Hiding in the palm trees oh. is good. Emily, let's start off with an overview of, in case it's not obvious for anybody, entrepreneur, and then specifically what you're focused in on. Totally. So Entrepreneur, we have a print publication and then a digital website. And so I write in the news section for Mm entrepreneur.com, kind of as a company overview, obviously, you know, it's within the name, but we cover anything sort of within the business sector that could vary from speaking to specific business owners to covering major corporation news that might be happening or trending. Mm -hmm might also be something along the lines of speaking to an expert and saying, here are four things that a CEO learned on his rise to the top and giving advice to budding business people and entrepreneurs. So we kind of run the gamut there from more evergreen content to more trending and of the moment content Mm -hmm. to more like people that are figureheads in the industry, Mm -hmm. depending on what part of the website we're on. Yes. What's your favorite type of story to write? Because your coverage is broad. Yes, it's very broad. So I do predominantly now. My like workflow is a lot of trending news stories. Mm-hmm. And you know, obviously that kind of coverage can vary in what specifically I'm covering. But I kind of love as I know most people do, like any sort of good news story, especially when it pertains to business. So maybe a business goes viral on TikTok and then all of a sudden they're selling out of their top selling item and it's changed this the store owner's life. And then getting to talk to them mm-hmm. for a little bit you know, kind of showing the power of social media through that lens or any kind of story where it's uplifting. Because I think the news cycle is obviously can be so... The opposite? Opposite, yeah. And yes. especially with business news, it can run very dry. So I think it's like trying to find things that keep people interested mm-hmm. while still staying within the subject realm that's appropriate. Mm-hmm. And how is your inbox? It is... I don't even want to read the number. I'm like one oh, of those God, people... no. It's like... Some people have to clear their inbox. I don't think I've ever... I have like hundreds of texts at any given time. I just like don't open everything because I'm getting inundated with stuff. But it's very full as my coverage is very broad. So I have a big mix of things on here. And by very full, are you a let it ride type of person? Like do you have 97,000 emails in there? Yeah, they're just, you know... They, they they add up. But again, that's the importance of a good subject line because if it's going to entice me to click on it, it will not. Indeed, stop. indeed. Okay, so it sounds like you keep all the emails you get. Do you then discern what to open by subject line as you were just mentioning? Yeah, I will. Okay. Usually that's like my first indicator of how to do it. Of course, if I like recognize the name of a publicist or a company that I've worked with prior, that will also get priority for me to open. And like building relationships in that regard has been super important to me. But I kind of just scan the subject lines and see what not, you know, and it's again, like for example, if I have something in my inbox and it's new, like makeup palette release, whatever, I'm probably not going to open that because we don't cover beauty. Mm-hmm. I'll just look for keywords as well and just kind of see what pops out as I go through. Hmm. Okay. Then 
well, actually, since you are in your inbox and I know we talked about this, is there an email that you want to like do a little shout out for or be like, oh, this is one I opened because yes. of how great the subject line. Ooh, tell us. Totally. So for me, when I'm looking at a subject line, it's kind of like when I'm writing a headline, that's how I look at it. It's basically the same thing. It's like you have maybe three seconds to capture the person's attention. And the most important parts of what's going to be within that email have to be in that subject line, but also in an engaging way. So what I always say is if someone's pitching an interview, instead of saying maybe the name of a CEO or a business owner that no one's ever heard of, if I just see like interview with in that name and I don't recognize it, I'm not going to open it. Yeah. But if it says like meet the entrepreneur who funded X, Y, and Z millions of dollars saving children from X, Y, and Z rural, you know, something like that. Something a little bit more descriptive. Yeah. Yeah. So this, I just got one and it says interview op colon, which is great. So now I know right away, okay, this is for an interview. Orange Theory Fitness is Ellen Latham. So I know who it is and I know the company and I'm familiar with Mm -hmm. the company name. Thinks Mother's Day should be two days. And you kind of read that and you're like, what? Uh Like, I'm not really sure. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to click into that and read about it. It gives you the company name. Say this would have just said interview with Ellen. I I might not recognize it, but Mm -hmm. I know what Orange Theory is. Now I know her name associated with it. And now I know this interesting hook is thinks Mother's Day should be two days. So it's like, it makes me want to click in and read. And I think, again, it's a very interesting way instead of saying, would you like to interview Orange Theory? Right. So now I know like why it's worth my time. Hmm. I like that tip because it's timely. It's a little distinct. You're like, why two days? I don't understand. And then it's incorporating then who the speaker is because so often I feel people are just like, oh, but I have someone who just generally could speak about anything. Right. It's like that doesn't get the open. Like you were just describing Emily. Exactly. Is there another one you want to share? So this one is more broad, but so this is an example of if people research before pitching or before sending an email, like the kind of coverage that you typically cover, it's Mm -hmm. going to make it so much easier for them to be able to send an email that they know you're going to open. So again, like I was saying, if I don't cover makeup or I don't cover beauty and I never have, like it doesn't really make sense to send me those kinds of emails. But a lot of the things we cover is real estate. And that could Mm -hmm. be anything from say it's like celebrity real estate or like this crazy house sold for whatever this listing had a story behind it. But we do a lot of the changing in the market, especially with inflation. Mm-hmm. This one is very simple. And it says, New York is one of the cheapest states in the US to buy a house, according to new research. Which again, it mm. kind of has that shock factor because if I'm living in New York City, it's definitely not the cheapest yeah. place yeah. to want to buy real estate. So then it broadens it. And then it says, according to new research. So now I know there's going to be a study and research attached to this email that I can reference back to when I'm creating this story. So that got a really quick open for me. And it's something that I can easily scan, see the data. And it's something that's relevant to what my readers want to read about as well. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now let me ask you though, was that a gotcha type of pitch? So some of them are, I will okay. admit that. Yes. Can we talk about that for just a second? Cause I feel like people are perhaps like, Oh, well, let me just finagle the subject line, but make it so silly and stupid that it in fact isn't what the actual pitch is. And then I think that's just bamboozlement. But yes, have you been seeing that as well? I have been seeing that. I find that Mm. a lot. And this is something that really, I don't want to say it does bother me, but if you're pitching something, so say a celebrity is backing a vodka brand and the Mm. subject line would say like, I'm making this up, but like interview, like question mark, Oprah's new vodka brand hitting shelves, whatever, May 15th. So then I'm like, oh my God, interview Oprah, like liquor, I've covered all of this. I'm going to click on it. And then it's offering you an interview with an executive somewhere that's not even maybe CEO or CMO. So it's like they trick you into being like, oh yeah, well, Oprah actually only invested X amount of money in it. It's not actually her company and you're not actually getting time with her. So that kind of bamboozlement. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Don't bamboozle out there in the world. No bamboozlement. Okay. Today's interview will continue after this brief message brought to you by OnePitch. Are you curious to see the unique ways OnePitch helps PR professionals and marketers pitch journalists? Head to OnePitch.co to learn about our new OnePitch score and see how easy it is to find the right journalist to pitch your news to. Sign up for your free account today. Now, back to today's episode. Emily, 
If someone does not have a relationship with you, how would they go about building one? So a lot of times I'm private on all social media except for Twitter. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times what will happen to me, and it always makes me laugh, is someone will send me an email or in the subject line, it'll be like a joke about something I tweeted about or I had posted on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Or let's say like, I'd love to introduce myself. Just want to let you know. I saw your tweet about X, Y, and Z and I was laughing. I also love that show. Something, Whatever. Something to show like a commonality. And I think like in any other industry, you'd be like, what? That's so invasive. But in this industry, that's kind of how you have to do it because everything is so open and public facing. That's like how we make relationships with people in journalism. So that's always funny to me, like something relatable. But I think a lot of times people will pitch like going for coffee, going to grab a drink. And for me, I love to do that. I've made so many connections with publicists. Mm. That way. But it'll be sometimes it's like, let me know if you're free anytime in the next three weeks and we can grab like drinks, dinner or coffee. And it's like, that's so overwhelming to me because there's no specificity with it. So a lot of times what I appreciate is if someone will be like, wanted to introduce myself. I work with X, Y, and Z companies at my agency. I would love to get dinner with you next Thursday in this area of the city. If you're available, we can talk about that, but just get to know each other and meet up. Like that's hmm. so much, hmm. it's like an informal, formal meeting. Yeah. Like getting FaceTime with, with publicists and stuff. It's really good to put a, a face to a name for me because then it makes it much more easier to work with moving forward. Good. So dinner, coffee, happy hours, high tea. Are you open for all? Oh my God. High tea. Yes. Bring me the high tea. And you will. <laughs> I'm <laughs> finding one in London right now. I was like, how much more London can I get? Oh, I know a high tea. That's <laughs> going to be great. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. That's so great to hear. I love it. Okay. Are there any pet peeves, Emily, that you wish to disclose about publicists yes. here? This is a safe okay. space. This is a safe space. Okay. Mm -hmm. Should go without saying. Okay. But you would be surprised how often this happens. Do not find my cell phone number <gasps> if we have never met. And call you. Call me and say I sent you an email. Can you please open it? Oh no. It happens so much more often than you would think. And my thing too is I totally understand if there's publicists I have that have my phone number that we've worked with in the past, yeah. or if it's something quick, like that's different, but I'll get literally, and I don't even know how people find my, my cell phone number. But I was just going to say, me. where is it out there? Do I, you know? Literally. Who knows? It's, it's, so, it's probably somewhere in the dark web. I don't even know. Yeah, no, probably but, is. Like, and people will be like, hey, this is so-and-so from whatever agency. Like I sent you an email regarding this. Would love for you to open it and get the chance to whatever. Mm. And it's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. automatically that turns me off. And now I'm like, I don't want to work with you. So yeah. That is definitely my biggest pet peeve. And again, I'm saying that because it happens very often. Like once a week? Do you get a call? I would say like once every two. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm crazy. shocked by that. No. I know. Yeah. It's wild. I mean, that's definitely my biggest one. My other one, which is like kind of similar, just not on the phone, is like following up twice in one day or like every single oh, day, no. even if it's just like a pitch. It's oh, no. like, okay, yeah. So the quick follow up. There's an art to it, but every day or multiple times a day is, is probably not. Not the art, not the art. What would you say is the art for the follow-up? I would say if it's a pitch and I haven't responded in maybe like three days, if it's not timely, like three to five days, yeah. just like making sure you wanted to resurface this, whatever. And then if there's no response after the second time, like usually that's it. But mm -hmm. I would say if it's like something and then like there's rapport back and forth, like a few days, but... I don't think there's anything that's, unless it's timely, which again, this goes back to subject lines, but if it's indicated in the subject line, like very timely or all capital letters timely, like then that's definitely a way to be like, okay, this is something that we need to get the ball rolling on. So I think in that sense, it's it's okay to follow up quicker. But if it's something that's either evergreen or not really on a tight deadline, I don't think every every single day is necessary. Yeah. I don't think so either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every day. Okay. How about exclusives or embargoes? Where do you fall on that? I love exclusives and embargoes. Okay. Another thing I will say is if you are pitching something as an exclusive, please have it actually be an exclusive. Yes. Let's define that. I'm sorry there's so much controversy apparently around this, but how would yeah, you describe there is. that? <laughs> For me, if yes. it says exclusive interview with like, I don't know why I keep using Oprah. If she ever listens to this, she's going to let her ears open. But, like, <laughs> maybe, you, but maybe she'll call you. So, hey, I would take it. Yeah. You know what? I'm trying to think of someone that's like non-controversial. But uh -huh. like say it's like 
exclusive interview. Michelle Obama. There you go. Yeah, with Michelle Obama, timely for entrepreneur.com. Then I'm like, okay. And if it's defined in the pitch, you will be the only person interviewing her for X, Y, and Z, then Uh absolutely like great. I would take it. But a lot of times it'll say like exclusive with, I don't know, Jill Biden. And then it's, I'm now I'm getting political. It's like the opposite of what I want to do. But like something with her. And then it'll say like exclusive information on her new campaign with whatever clothing company, like we can get you quotes from Jill. And then it's like, then that's where it gets dicey because it's like, Mm -hmm. if you're just sending me quote unquote exclusive quotes, but you're saying I have access to this exclusive information, it's very easy to either like give similar information or similar quotes to other outlets. And then it's not really defined. Is the access to the talent exclusive? Mm -hmm. Is the information exclusive? It just has to be clearly, clearly defined. So for me, if someone says I'm giving you the exclusive, it means I'm the only person. The only that person. The yeah. only. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Got you. Okay. How early do you want an embargo, by the way? It depends. If it's something okay. like a fast food new menu item or something like a video campaign or like a big product launch usually mm-hmm. takes longer, but I think a week is pretty fair. Okay. As, as long as it's a quick turnaround, but if it's like a big embargo with something like crazy major, like a major shakeup with a CEO or something like that, maybe like two weeks, just so it, there's adequate time to do research and make sure there's extra information there for the reader. But usually embargoes, I mean, at least the ones that I get are pretty quick turnarounds. So. Okay. Okay. Quick turnarounds for you. Okay. Good to know just for everybody else. One last area for us to talk about, Emily, is mm-hmm. this rapid fire question session or portion. Mm-hmm. Love yes. It. So I have a little list of questions and you just rapidly answer the first thing on your mind. Does that sound okay. good? Sounds great. Okay. Here we go. Video <laughs> or phone interview? Video. Bullet points or paragraphs? Bullet points. Short or long pitches? How short or how long? Short. But with an, like, can I say medium? Is that yes, the cop yes. out of I'm, yes. I'm <laughs> Medium, like short paragraphs, but I'd rather have one or two sentence paragraphs, but maybe like four or five paragraphs in the email rather than one long mm-hmm. essay logic thing that I probably mm-hmm. won't read. Images attached or Dropbox zip file? Attached. Pitches in the morning or at night? I'm weird in that regard, but at night. At night. Okay, good so to I know. Clear, yes. I look at my inbox. Like if I'm, say I'm off, I'm usually off around like five, maybe later, but even like randomly through the night, especially if it's during the week, I might just pop on my email and just check to make sure I didn't miss anything. And mm-hmm. a lot of the pitches I get that I actually like sit and open and read, or I usually get later in the day. Cause I feel like a lot of people are in that 10 to 11 AM mm-hmm. time slot and they're just all coming at once. But if you get it at night, I'm someone mm-hmm. who will read Back my email, so I'll, I'll always mm. see it. If it mm. like. Okay, good to know. Email or Twitter DM? Twitter DM. Oh, okay, that's noted for everybody. This is why we ask. And then <laughs> you already alluded to this a bit, but one follow up or multiple? Usually one, unless it's something that really would warrant multiple. But mm-hmm. usually by the time there's multiple, there's probably already been a conversation. So mm-hmm. direct or creative subject lines? Creative. Creative, creative. Oh, see, I keep like hybrid. Creative, creative but real. Yes, exactly. Creative, yes. but factual. Factual. There you go. Press release or media kit? Media kit. That makes it so much easier. Okay. Excellent. Emily, is there anything we can promote, hype, talk about regarding your great work? Nothing other than just if you have any interesting business stories, good news stories you want to send my way. I'm a big fan of interviewing any sort of talent or celeb that might be like working on a new business venture and wanting to talk kind of about that yeah. part of their career okay. versus just like what people might know them for regularly. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you got a good hook, send it my way. Okay, Miss Emily. Well, thank you, Emily, for being here today. Everyone, she wants to go to dinner and high tea. Find her in New I York just- City. Senior <laughs> news writer from Entrepreneur, Emily Rella. Thank you so much, Emily. You enjoy Florida. Oh, thank you so much. So excited to be here. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Coffee with the Journalist featuring Emily Rella at Entrepreneur. For more exclusive insights about the journalists on this podcast, subscribe to our weekly podcast newsletter at onepitch.co forward slash podcast. We'll see you next week 
with even more insights about the journalists you want to learn more about. Until then, start great stories. <laughs>